Hey everyone, it's Richard Metal Fan here, bringing you guys an old school album review. And today we're going to be looking into this album's 10 year anniversary, and it's from, well, pretty much a, an underrated album from of theirs in their discography. And it's from, well, one of the my fa favorite deathcore bands ever. And as you can see, below the title, today we're going to be looking into A New Era of Corruption by Whitechapel, the band's third album released on June 8th, 2010, through Metal Blade Records. Now, of course, this follows up in my opinion their second second album and probably my favorite Whitechapel album from this is exile which i still think is probably their best work to date but and this album is kind of different compared to like this is exile or even somatic defilement where i just feel like they've like it still retains some the, the stuff that Whitechapel is and i feel like this is pretty much was the Whitechapel at their peak with both I feel like after this they kind of like experimented more with like groove V stuff stuff and of course with their last two album but at least two, two albums they do the clean vocals but of course this album like just focuses just on aggression but they have some little parts here and there and there's a little bit here and there but it's not like like on the, which would be the their next the next album after the self tower they would have more groove to it but yeah let's just dive right into this vocally just Phil Bozeman I just love how he just retains just like his growls and just his low guttural sound good and his sort of like his high streaks that he does sometimes is great but he's just primarily known for his more lower kind of like vocals um guitar work is tight uh, uh ben savage alex wade and zach householder just hold great with the three guitar players i mean i still don't know why Whitechapel needs three guitar players but they, they pretty much make it work with this the bass i wish was kind of audible and drumming wise this was the last album with the uh, their original drummer kevin lane before he left and then was replaced by ben harkler for a few albums but yeah so without further ado let's just go right into this album track by track now starting things off is devolver which just within like a minute into this song we're just greeted with some guitars playing like a little bit of like leads and per, like a little bit of a harmony style you know but uh, just amidst the chugs and sort of like phil bozeman's just pounding vocals it's just clear that this album is just going to be like just breakdowns and stuff pretty much what deathcore was known for especially in 2010 the whole like myspace like the peak of like the whole myspace deathcore bands like like but i just don't get me wrong i feel like there's enough breakdowns to please like the general deathcore crowd but it doesn't but it's not like the main focus right here and at the end of the song it seems like like you'll pretty much have feels like like this very much is more death metal than core but contrary to the name of the song but this album doesn't like devolve from this point on it's pretty much does the opposite which is evolve and then we move on to breeding violence which is greeted with some sick guitar leads that moving for moving away from like the constant chugs that a lot that pretty much is primarily no what death core is known for and that's sort of like the dual guitars blend perfectly with the rest of the song and then later later just which is kind of nuts we have acoustic interludes in deathcore and it just works so well um moving on to probably my favorite song on this album like the darkest day of man which has a great build up with like guitars and then some sick double bass drumming megan does and phil's vocals just sound good and i just love how he transitions from lows to highs it's just fucking great hey probably my favorite song from this album it's just perfect then we go into probably an interesting song, which is Reprogrammed to Hate. And this song pretty much shows a sort of like diverse blend of sort of like some soloing, which sounds very kind of like jazz-like, and just the riffage. Fidge. And just, this also has a guest appearance from uh, Chino Moreno from the, the great Deftones. And I just like how his vocals, along with Phil's, just blend together. Also have a little bit of like grooviness to it, which is a very interesting listen to when you hear it. Um, End of Flesh, which has a piece that is no, well, that's like 15 seconds where the all three of the guitarists play, play just like strumming and just some leads. And the song itself is just melodic. It can, has some chugs and stuff. So it's pretty much all over here. Um, then we go into uh, Unnerving. And this is pretty much, in my opinion, the most diverse song on here, which like the first like 16 or so seconds has a bit of like orchestration in the in there which makes you kind of stretch your head thinking this is different and the vocals are here great and i just love how this song has like a lot orchestra which is the first time i've heard heard you hear it in a white chop album up from till this point in 2010 when this album drops but yeah and this is pretty much like i said the most diverse album 
song that I, on this album with the orchestration parts. And I really would love, love Whitechapel to do, like, just have some more songs with, like, orchestration parts in, in the background. It would make it so awesome. So, yeah. Then we go into A Future Corrupt, and this song just goes right into it and wastes no time. And the guitars just sound really good, and just the vocals just sound great. Um, Prayer of Mark Mockery. Now, this is pretty much where I feel like the guitars in here sound a little bit repetitive, just like in the rhythm, them, but in the lead, the leads that are played over it sound different, which ma but makes it so it's sort of repetitive, but it's sort of not, depending on how you interpret it. Um, moving on to Murder Sermon, which is not only just musically, but also just heavy, just in the vocal department of Phil's vocals. Oh, and I just, I just love the insane like double kick, and this track also has enough as a guest appearance from Vincent Bennett of the Acacia Strain, which, and especially like in the chorus, is just fucking amazing. Great song. Then we move on to Necromechanical, or Necromaniacal, I can't even speak today, I'm sorry. It sort of like fades right in and just builds up and then Phil just belts out just a sick scream. And just, the, Phil just sounds like his vocals when he just goes so low, it just sounds so deep here, which kind of reminds me of something from in the first album, Somatic Defilement. Like, I feel like this song could have been on here. Here, that's just what it pretty much what it reminds you of. And then we move on to the last song, which is Single File to Dehumanation, which has some show sign of just really great beauty, featuring some really good melodic riffs and some guitar lines, which just, it gives it just, I don't know, it just gives it a, a pretty much a good atmosphere. And it's a pretty interesting way to end this album. Now, overall, A New Era of Corruption by Whitechapel is, like I said, their most underrated album. Like, I don't think really, nobody really talks about this album, and I really wish Whitechapel would play some more songs from this album live, especially like Murder Sermon or Darkest Day of Man. So yeah, if I were to give this album a score, I'm going to give A New Era of Corruption by Whitechapel a solid 9 out of 10. So yeah, that's my review of the album, guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the album, and I'll see you all in the next video. And as always, keep it metal.